Hello and welcome to Currents Up Close. I'm Craig Johnson. I'll be hosting the program today and our guest is Steve Bernard uh, from Cedar Falls Utilities. Welcome Steve. Thank you Craig. Steve is the me. Director of Customer Service and also Business Development for CFU and uh, CFU has quite a large and new project to talk about this time. We have something very new to talk about this time around and so I think we'll just get right, get right in it. We're going to talk about um, a new solar project and uh, it's called Simple Solar. Could you explain what that means? Sure, yeah, thanks, Greg. And yeah, we call it Simple Solar. Uh, our intention is we like to build a large solar array in Cedar Falls and have it be a community-based solar array and make it simple for our custom customers to participate uh, and be active with solar energy. So what are the overall, and you've mentioned some of them right now, but what are some of the other reasons for even launching this project? Yeah, there's a variety of reasons for launching it. One, we've had a lot of interest from customers in solar energy and renewable energy in general. Uh, that's one reason that we want to take a look at this. Um, another reason is that the cost of solar energy itself has come down dramatically over the last five to ten years. So there's some economic forces in play that make it reasonable to look at solar energy right now. Things like tax credits as well mm -hmm. come into play right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, primarily it's because we've got customers that are interested in this. We think it would be a fun and unique project to have the ability to have some renewable energy generated, clean energy generated right here in Cedar Falls. So there must be some considerations you've gone through to try and figure out where to place solar panels and what have you come up with and what are the reasons for that location? Yeah, yeah. Our plan is to locate the solar array in Prairie Lakes Park. It'd be kind of in the northeastern corner of the park and I know we had a graphic up earlier which showed kind of an artist rendering of what that might look like. Mm -hmm. But folks that are familiar with the park there, there's an eastern entrance to Prairie Lakes Park at the top of the screen there. Uh, there's a driveway entrance in there, and the uh, solar array would actually be to the east of that driveway in the northern part of the park near Viking Road. Mm -hmm. And we're just thankful for the city to allow us to use that property for the array. Uh, it would be sited on anywhere from three to eight acres of property there, depending on how much customer interest we have in the process. In the so part of it's the, the fact the land is available there, right? Yes. Are there any other site considerations that you would that you looked at as to where to put yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, there actually are. Uh, we considered whether or not we should put this on rooftops mm -hmm. around town and possibly distribute it somewhat uh, because there's an interest in putting uh, solar on rooftops for a, a number of reasons. We settled on the park for a couple of reasons, primarily driven though by cost. Part of our uh, goal here is to make this as inexpensive as possible for our customers to buy into the project and invest in it. So cost was a big consideration and actually mounting these on the ground uh, in one large location we think is a, is a much more economical way of doing it rather than spreading it out on roofs in different locations. Sure. If you were going to put this on one roof, you'd have to find a mighty big roof to handle three to eight acres. And yes, that just wouldn't, wasn't going to be practical. Right. Now that leads us to another question, which is, and a lot of people probably have somewhat of a sense about how, you know, solar panels work and how electricity is generated, but uh, could you kind of go through kind of a simple look at how those panels work? Sure. Yeah, they're really, a, they're called a photovoltaic panel, mm -hmm. and it's really a, a, a electrical process essentially that takes the energy from the sun, the radiation from the sun, in the panel. There, there are no moving parts, they're flat panels, uh, but they, you can create electricity through that process room and it outputs direct current energy and then we convert that to energy that we can then pipe basically into our electrical system. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a large uh, garden of potentially 2,000 or more of these panels that will be all interconnected electrically and then generate uh, energy back on the system, similar to the panels you're seeing on the screen there. So what are some of the factors that determine how much electricity is generated from a solar farm? Yeah, well, obviously sunshine's a big one. Right. In the middle of the night, you're not really going to generate any out of it. So sunshine right. is really key. Uh, orientation is important. Um, and there are certain systems where the panels actually will slowly move and track the sun. Uh, this system is likely going to be a fixed system to not track the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a possibility still it could track. Uh, there's cost considerations, and we have to evaluate the economics as to what's going to make the most sense. Sunshine's a key, key element. Actually, you can generate a fair amount even on a cloudy day. Mm -hmm. And in winter months, even when it's cloudy, it will generate. Of course, it's not going to generate in the evening hours uh, when the sun's down. So I'm at home and I throw my light switch on or turn on my television, mm -hmm. whatever. And of course, the power is right there. Um, CFU is connected to a system mm -hmm. that um, is delivering uh, energy to Cedar Falls, electricity to Cedar Falls. 
uh, from different sources. So how yes. does solar fit in with those different sources? Yeah. You know, you've got natural gas and you've got nuclear and you've got wind and all right. this going on, right. coal. Yep, good question. A number of those you mentioned are what we call dispatchable sources, meaning we can turn them on and off as we want to. Mm -hmm. Coal fired, natural gas fired type of generation, you can turn on and off as needed. Um, with most renewable energy sources, you don't have the ability to do that, whether it's hydro or wind power or solar power. A unique thing about solar power versus wind energy, for instance, is that the production of the solar energy matches pretty well with our electrical needs. Uh, you think about when uh, we peak as a community of electrical use. It's on a hot summer day, sun is shining bright, it's 90 plus degrees and it's humid. Chances are the wind's not blowing, so if you had wind energy, it may not be doing you any good on those days. But with the solar system, the output of those solar arrays obviously peaks when the sun is at its brightest. Uh, so it tracks pretty nicely our, our daily needs for electrical use on peak days. Okay, um, so can, um, can the energy be stored? So you talk about how at night, of course, the sun's not up, so there's not yeah. or anything then. Is it possible to store this energy and use it at a time like that? Yeah, unfortunately, it's not practical yet on a commercial utility grade scale for energy storage through batteries. There's constantly work going on with battery technology to try to get to that point, but I think we're probably years away from that being practical on a large scale. So whether it's wind energy or solar, generally there's not storage systems attached to them. So when they're generating, that energy is flowing right into the system immediately. There may be some questions from uh, customers who might think, well, why solar rather than wind? You know, mm -hmm. those are two renewable sources, so why would you pick one over the other? Yeah, there's a couple reasons. And then there's, you know, wind energy has its benefits as well. In the state of Iowa, you know, roughly 25% of the energy generated in the state of Iowa is from wind turbines. And people around here see that if they drive west towards, and southwest even towards Grundy Center now, there's a lot of wind turbines going up there. And certainly in the northwest part of the state, lots and lots of wind energy in Iowa. This solar project will create a nice balance. As I had mentioned earlier, the output of it um, on a hot summer sunny day when energy costs are the highest is when this will produce its best. As compared to wind energy, on those days the wind is probably not blowing, so you're not going to get much value on those peak days mm -hmm. from wind. So when you are looking at how much energy would be generated, obviously it depends on how many panels you have and other factors, yeah. but just how much would you anticipate would be generated I guess based on the size that you have in mind? Yeah, we, we're looking at a project that will have a, a range of sizes depending on customer interest because this really is going to be a community project driven by customer interest and customer subscription, which I know we'll talk about a little later about mm -hmm. how it's going to work. So probably the smallest size we're looking at would power maybe about 60 homes, the large end maybe around 250. So it's kind of that range mm -hmm. depending again on how much customer interest there is. So we're going to look at some of the economics now about solar energy and so what What's the reason for building it now? Why is this feasible now? Yeah, several reasons there. Uh, one large one is the fact that the cost of solar panels has come down dramatically the last few years. The other big reason is federal tax credits are very significant. There's a 30% federal tax credit that's set to be drastically reduced at the end of 2016. Mm -hmm. So we think the timing is right now because we want to be able to have those tax benefits used if we wait much longer, solar panel cost might come down a little bit yet, but that would be offset if the tax credits were lost beyond 2016. Sounds so, like those tax credits are really major because that would be a lot of. That's right. A that's lot, that's really. a significant amount and the yeah. significant part of making this a viable project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who's going to build the project and own the ob uh, project and also maintain the panels when you have them set up? How yeah. Does that work? Yeah. The beauty about this and one of the benefits for our customers is that it's a it's really a hands-off deal for our customers. And we, again, that's part of making it simple. Uh, so CFU will take ownership of the energy off the project and we'll turn around obviously and sell that to our, to our community mm -hmm. into, our, into our grid. Uh, there actually will be a third party that will own the array for a period of years until CFU likely takes ownership. And that all has to do with the tax credits. CFU as a municipal can't take tax credits. Uh, so there'll be a third party that owns it. So the customers that subscribe to this, our citizens, won't technically have ownership of it, mm -hmm. but they'll have rights to their share of the output of the array, and they'll get a credit on their bill for that. So when it comes to dollars, what does it cost to build this and also maintain it? Yeah, you know, these are pretty expensive systems. Mm -hmm. um, depending on the range that we look at, you're probably looking at anywhere from $1.2 million to upwards to you know, close to $5 million possibly by the time you get on the largest size. So, you know, they're very 
fairly expensive systems, but they have a long life also as with a lot of generating mm -hmm. assets. So why are shares being offered to see a few customers as opposed to see a few just building it? Yeah, you know, we consider that, and, and some utilities do that where they'll just build the large solar array where all of their customers are paying for it. We felt customer choice was a better option in this case because we know there's a lot of customers that are, are deeply interested in renewable energy. They want a clean alternative, um, and this gives those customers a chance to invest in this and also see the return and the credit on their bill. Mm -hmm. So we felt that at this point was a better route to go rather than just doing it for all of our consumers at once. So you touched on this. Um, what are shareholders actually sharing here then? Yeah, it's a good question. The way this will work is we will sell shares, if you will, of the project, which is the output, rights to the output of it. Um, and so a customer will make an investment up front and to get their share of the energy. The, the investment up front per share will be $399. And for that, they'll get their allocated share of the actual output of the array. And they'll see that every month in their utility bill for 20 years. We're going to give them a credit for 20 years. And that credit will be based on, again, the actual output of the array. So if a customer buys five shares, and let's say there's 5,000 shares total mm -hmm. sold, they would get five five thousandths of the energy output that month mm -hmm. as a credit on their utility bill. And we will give them an energy credit rate that will change yearly uh, as well, and that's how they will get a credit. So what happens to the project if not enough shares are sold? Because you have uh, plans for like a minimum size and probably a maximum yeah. size. What if yep. you don't reach that in terms of shares sold? Yeah, we, we are, our minimum number of shares that we need to sell is 3,000 roughly. The maximum we can build on the site at Prairie Lakes Park would, would amount to about 9,000 shares. So we're sure hoping we can get up to that 9,000 right. level because there's economies of scale mm -hmm. that help with the cost also if we get to that point. Um, if we don't reach the 3,000 share level, uh, then it's very likely the project won't happen because we really want this driven by customer interest. And right. The good news is we're off to a pretty good start. We've got about 1,100 shares sold already uh, as of this morning, and you know we're only a couple of weeks into this process. So right, so you're about a third of the way to the minimum size. To the minimum want, size already, yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, what happens to the payout to customers if service is interrupted from the project for whatever reason? I mean, yeah. it could be some malfunction of some sort or some damage, something like that? Sure, sure. The, the customer credit is going to be tied directly to the output of the panels in the array. So if the, the array, for whatever reason, stops generating electricity, the credits would stop to customers. But if that's due to some kind of a, you know, the, the reason that that would happen for any extended period would probably be some type of natural disaster mm -hmm. that would wipe the system out for some reason. Uh, if that happens and the system is down for a month or something like that, we're certainly going to be encouraged to get it up and operating as quickly as possible. And in all likelihood, we would just extend the credits for the customer one month longer. If it's down for a month, instead of getting your credits for 20 years, you'll go 20 years plus a month to make it up on the back end. So barring any catastrophe of some sort, That's really right. these are pretty reliable systems. They are pretty reliable systems. Yeah, there's not, not any moving parts unless you get a system that tracks. And the solar panels themselves are pretty durable. They're tested for hail damage and those kind of things and, and have been proven out to be pretty, pretty hardy here even in Midwest weather. I know that some people have actually put solar panels on the roof. Some people have gone mm -hmm. to that investment. Mm -hmm. And we may, you may have customers that are wondering if maybe why they shouldn't just do it themselves. Yeah. Is there any advantage to that? So what is the benefit of going through CFU to do it rather than somebody trying to put it on their sure. roof? Sure, yeah, there's a couple of benefits to it. One is the simplicity of this. Again, we call it simple solar for that reason is we want to make it simple for customers to participate. And one thing that allows us to do is to allow customers to buy in at a lower price point. $399, for instance, can at least get you a share of this solar array. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to put it on your own home, it's generally quite a bit more expensive than that, um, probably upwards of $10,000 or more, depending on the size of the system. So for some, it's going to be an economic issue that they just don't want to spend that kind of money. For others, their home just may not be oriented properly to take advantage of solar. They may not have a south-facing roof. Mm -hmm. They may have a lot of trees in their yard. Um, they may be renters or may live in a condo and don't have the ability to put their own solar on. So we think this is a great way to do this collectively as a community, take advantage of the economies of scale, professional management of it mm -hmm. so that individual homeowners don't have to hassle with any of the maintenance and those kind of things long term. It really takes away a lot of the risk of some of the factors that, that they would have it on does. their own. Yes, they? it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we've reached about the half point, halfway point on our program, and I um, really appreciate you talking about these are really very important issues that yeah. people need to consider uh, if they'd like to uh, invest in this project. What we'd like to do here is uh, let you know that if you'd like to learn more, 
about the project and reserve your shares, you can just go to cfu.net forward slash solar and you will find uh, this information and a lot more information um, to look at if you're, when you're considering uh, buying the shares from CFU. And also in the next 15 minute segment, we're not done yet, we'll be um, uh, looking at um, some CFU customers who have decided to buy shares are going to tell us why they've decided to do that. And we're also going to look at just uh, how you go about getting the shares and also how it will help you, help you save on your electric bill coming up in years to come. So we'll be right back in a moment. We all know that the Cedar Valley is a great place to live and work. And there are many individuals and organizations that are doing their part to improve the quality of life for everyone that calls this their home. On Serving the Valley, we sit down with these service organizations to learn more about different projects and events that need your support. We all need to do our part to help out our community. Tune into Serving the Valley to learn more. And welcome back to Currents Up Close. Our guest today is um, Steve Bernard from CFU. Uh, and we're talking about simple solar today, so we're glad to have Steve with us. And uh, coming up now, we uh, are going to be listening to what some customers of CFU have to say about simple solar. They've decided to become involved and buy shares, and they're going to relate some of the reasons for why they decided to become involved with simple solar. Well, the program is just so unique in many ways, uh, and, and especially the way that was described. Uh, many homeowners that you know want to uh, diversify their, their energy usage, uh, you know, they can do things on site at their own property. Well, this program actually allowed us to leverage the, the utility to actually invest in uh, alternative energies, but through uh, uh, maybe a program that's larger in scale. And we all know how scale works. Uh, it can be done more efficiently. Of course, you have all that knowledge uh, that's at utilities where they can uh, deploy that. They can plug right into the grid. I don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. So it actually, it, it truly did simplify uh, my desire to explore uh, alternative energy. So, uh, you know, I, I think about solar all the time because wherever you see uh, roofs uh, in Cedar Falls, whether it be you know warehouses, industrial spaces, or own personal homes, all these are areas that could potentially capture capture solar. Uh, it all depends on the height of your home. So this home is probably tall enough that's above that tree line, uh, but I don't want to get on the roof. So, uh, you know, th again, this program just worked out uh, real well in that respect. My first desire was actually to have a long-term savings on my bill. So uh, the, the expectation that I pay in up front or, you know, in the first year uh, a, a sum and then in the 25 year expectancy lifespan, lifespan of this project, you know, I actually save money in the long term, especially since I intend to stay in Cedar Falls for the long term. And as an added benefit, uh, I can, uh, you know, it's, it's helping Cedar Falls utilities diversify some of its portfolio and energy. Uh, anything that's not fossil fuel is a good thing. Uh, it's another form of green energy, I think. It's renewable. It's, uh, it's not fossil fuel, <laughs> which I don't think that we can maintain forever. So. so we were really interested in doing solar at our own house, but we don't have any open space on our roof because we have lots of mature trees. Uh, we obviously didn't want to cut down any trees, so it makes a lot of sense for us to invest in a bigger community-oriented project that CFU is doing with Simple Solar. We just put in a, a new roof about four years ago on our house mm -hmm. and we wanted to have solar on the roof but it wasn't feasible with the trees above so we're really thrilled to be part of this project where we can join in and, um, and collectively um, collect solar power. 
Well, I mean, first, CFU, everything they do is first class. And it makes little sense to me for each individual homeowner to research and buy a system that maybe works and maybe doesn't. And here it's going to have the engineering behind it and all the resources of the Cedar Falls utilities. Uh, I think it's just another feather in Cedar Falls cap to have a solar farm like this. Um, and again, we've all got to do something in regard to this minimizing our dependence on fossil fuels. Like about a lot of other citizens of Cedar Falls, we've been contributing a small amount each month into uh, green energy or basically wind generation as Cedar Falls utilities have had a long history of uh, either buying owning or leasing wind generations in the state of Iowa. So this is a follow-up and continuation of, I think, being involved in promoting or being supportive of uh, renewable energy and, and solar and, and wind are those two major things. And I, I think this whole process is, uh, by doing this process with a solar garden, it allows people not to have to go through the, the, the thought of how to install it on your roof and so on. So it's been, it's made it very easy for just to sign up and, and buy. And if you want to learn more and reserve your shares, you can go to cfu.net forward slash solar. There's a lot of information available there. So those are the reasons some of the some CFU customers have decided to uh, buy shares in Simple Solar. So Steve, let's talk about just mm -hmm. who is eligible to participate. Yeah, any CFU electric customer, as long okay. as you have an electric account with Cedar Falls Utilities, we welcome your investment in shares, and that's homeowners or businesses. Okay. And, and we're starting to see a ramp up in interest from businesses. You know, a lot of, a lot of businesses have renewable energy or sustainability type goals, mm -hmm. and we hope this will fit, uh, fit them as well. Okay. So what do shares cost, and how did you arrive at that figure? Yeah, the $399 a share. Mm -hmm. If we get into the larger end of this project, in other words, the largest that we could possibly build on the site, there's a chance that that share price might actually go down uh, because of the economies of scale. We're hoping that that will be the case, but right now we've set it at $399 for this early enrollment period that, that we're into right now. Um, and we, we arrived at that by, we've got bids for construction of the array and the cost of the energy. So we factored that in, we factored in long-term maintenance because the utilities will be doing all of that. The homeowner doesn't have to worry about it. All of that is what factored into the cost. And you said you have a, about 1,100 shares sold right now. Again, yeah. um, what is the, the total number of shares you're looking for so yeah. people know? We'd love to get to 9,000. Mm -hmm. 3,000 is the minimum. Mm -hmm. And again, we have a pretty good head start on that. And, right. and we have the enrollment period going on right now through the end of July. And this is really the crucial period because this really will determine whether or not we're able to build the project. And if we are able to build it, how large? So that's right. why we're really encouraging customers to subscribe online, as you've shown them. Uh, or certainly call the utilities office at 266-1761 with any questions and get that enrollment in uh, because by the end of July we're going to be uh, checking that and then we'll be able to make that decision as to can we proceed or not. Okay, and again, just uh, how is the credit on my uh, bill going to be credited to yeah. me? Yeah, your electric bill will look the same as it does today. All your usage and everything will stay on the same rate. And then at the bottom of your electric bill, you'll see a credit that's mm -hmm. going to be based on your share of the output from the solar array. Okay. That share is going to vary month to month because the output of the array will vary every month. Sunny days, beautiful days, like today it's going to generate pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that will be, there will be a credit rate also that's applied on the bill that's going to be really based on our avoided cost of energy because we're taking energy off the solar array that we would have been buying on the open market. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to give customers credit for. We think based on our estimate of future energy costs and that what we expect that credit to be, customers probably get a payback in around 15 years for thereabouts of their initial investment is what we're anticipating. So if I'm trying to figure out how many shares to buy, other than you know personal finances obviously yeah. are involved in that as well, but mm -hmm. uh, is there any help I can get to? Sure, that? yeah. Call the CFU office. We can take a look at your bill. Mm -hmm. uh, as a rule of thumb, the average house in Cedar Falls uses about 10,000 kilowatt hours of energy a year. One share of of the solar array is going to produce somewhere between 250 and 300 kilowatt hours a year. Mm -hmm. So one share is somewhere around two and a half to three percent of the average home's annual usage. Okay. And, and how long is the payback going then? Yeah, we'll, we will pay that credit for 20 years. Okay. So it's a long-term project and a long-term uh, investment for customers. And you're estimating that uh, you would probably get your money back in about 15, in about 15. 15 yes, years. That's correct. So, but you're mm -hmm. going to pay out to 20 then. But we'll pay out to 20. That's okay. exactly right. 
-hmm. And this, so is that the expected lifespan of the project then, 20 years, or is there actually possibly that's going longer? Than yeah, that? we, we think the solar array will be in service longer than that, but at about 20 years, uh, prior to that actually, we'll be replacing inverters, some panels on it because they will just wear out over time or mm -hmm. they'll fail. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be some maintenance and you know probably 25 years or thereabouts into it we may have close to re have rebuilt the project mm -hmm. just because of the replacement of the panels. And there may be new technology in the future that's more efficient than current panel technology that right. makes economic sense to replace them in the future. Again the beauty about this is the customers pay the $399 once. They don't have to worry about those future panel replacements. Those, they're covered for that full 20 years of mm -hmm. credit that they get back. And when will the project be, if it gets off the ground, when will it be completed? Yeah, we're, uh, we're taking this, the enrollment period through July. If everything looks good at that point, we'll move ahead with lining up a contract for construction. Construction would happen during the winter months and hopefully generating electricity then sometime in the early part of 2016. Well, an obvious question then is if, if a customer buys shares and they move, sure. Mm -hmm. They might move somewhere else within your customer service area, or they might move outside of the area. What happens in those two cases? Yeah, then? right. Yep, great question. Because this is a long-term investment, a long-term project, we wanted to accommodate that because that's going to be a natural question folks have. If you move in town, there's no problem. The shares will just transfer with you to your new CFU Electric account. Mm -hmm. If for whatever reason you're no longer a CFU Electric customer, you've got two options. One, you can transfer the shares to someone else who is a CFU Electric customer. Uh, or you can sell them back to CFU. If you move out of town or you move into a facility where you no longer have your own electric meter, like a retirement community, uh, you can sell your shares back to CFU. If you've been on the program for 10 years, you won't get full price back, but you'll get a prorated amount because you've been getting that credit for 10 years. Okay. We're trying to take the risk out of it for customers for those circumstances. It looks like you've already done that, haven't you? We're trying Pretty to, much, absolutely, yeah. we think yeah. we have. Mm -hmm. um, so when I purchase the shares, what is the process I go through to do that? How do I go about actually doing yeah, that? Yeah, it's really pretty simple. Again, right now we're in an enrollment period, so we're asking customers to, to indicate to us their level of interest so that we can make a decision, yes or no. Mm -hmm. if, if it does look like it will proceed, and we'll know that late summer mm -hmm. um, time period, uh, then we'll go ahead with construction. And at that time also, we'll ask customers to make a formal pledge to us, if you will, and sign a formal agreement for a commitment for their number of shares. So what we're doing right now is kind of a, uh, an enrollment period, but we're not actually asking customers to sign on the dotted line. That will happen once we decide that we have enough interest to move ahead, that there'll be a customer agreement. Um, and and it's, we're going to make that as simple as we possibly can for customers to do that. And then probably around two months before the system is scheduled to begin generating electricity mm -hmm. is when we would ask customers to actually make that payment. Okay. And we're going to allow customers to pay that over a one-year period 12 equal payments on their utility bill if they would prefer to do that. Again, trying to make it easy for customers right, to so sign up. Right, so you can just divide by 12 and that becomes yep. a monthly payment. Yep, that is exactly account. right. And that'll probably happen early part of 2016 okay. in that okay. time frame. Very good. Um, we'd like to show you one more time how you can find out more about the project. Um, so let's take a look at that. You can see you can learn more and reserve your shares at CFU dot net forward slash solar and again there's a lot of information there um, things we've talked about in this program and probably a few things we haven't are in there um, to some of the various questions that people have wanted to have answered about the project so we encourage you to take a look at it and um, consider uh, investing in simple solar so again steve i want to thank you very much thank you, um, Craig. steve bernard from cfu uh, for joining us today and uh, filling us in on this uh, exciting project that it, uh, CFU is undertaking. It is exciting, so yeah. thank you for having me. Okay, very good. And thank you for watching us, and uh, we hope to see you again next time on Currents Up Close.